Hi, welcome to this video. In this video we are going to cover everything about Flutter push notification using Firebase. Push notifications are notifications coming from the server. They are a very important feature in modern day application because they encourage your users to further engage with your application. For this, I created a new Flutter project and I did some code cleaning. So as you can see, we are inside the basic counter application. Next, we are going to create a new Firebase project. For this, we go to the Firebase console. We create a new project. I'm going to name it push notification. We can either enable or disable Google Analytics. I'm going to disable it. And now we wait for our project to be ready. Great, our new project is ready. So now we should link our existing Flutter application to this Firebase project. For this, we have two options. We can either follow the instructions here and do it manually for Android and the instructions here for iOS, or we can use another tool which is the Flutter Fire CLI. The Flutter Fire CLI is a tool that helps you integrate Firebase into your application almost automatically. We already did a video covering everything about the Flutter Fire CLI, so please make sure to check it out. Do you want to learn Flutter in a better and faster way? Then simply join our 12-week Flutter training on heyflutter.com where you master all the Flutter topics such as Start, UI Design, State Management, Firebase, Clean Architecture, Databases and so on by watching our structured courses that help you for each topic to go from a newbie until an expert level in Flutter. Okay, so back into our Firebase console, we are going to add Firebase into our Android Flutter application. For this, we click here on this Android icon. Next, we should find the Android package name. So back into our source code, we go into the Android folder, app folder, src, main, and finally the Android manifest file. This is the package name of our application. So we copy it, we paste it here, we register the app. Next, we should download this configuration file. So I'm saving it here on the desktop. Great. So we should put it into the correct location, which is next to the src folder. For this, I'm going to drag and drop it. Great. For the next step, we should add the Firebase SDK. For this, we go to the project level build.gradle file, which is this file here. So we should make sure that we have the Google repository here. If not, we should add it and we should add the dependency here. Okay, so I'm going to copy this line and I'm pasting it here. And again, we should make sure that we have the Google repository. As for the next step, we move on to the app level build.gradle file, which is this file here. So we should apply some plugin here. For this, I'm going to copy this line. I'm pasting it here and we should add some dependencies. So we go here, we copy this, I'm pasting it here. And that's it, we are ready to use Firebase with our Android Flutter application. Unfortunately, I cannot show you the steps needed for iOS because I do not own an iOS development environment, but we already did a video covering everything you need to know about iOS and Firebase, so please make sure to check it out. So now we are adding the Firebase packages. For this, I open a new terminal. We go to the pubspec.yaml and we run this command, flutter pub add Firebase core. It. As you can see, Firebase core has been added. Next, we run this command, flutterpub add Firebase messaging. And as you can see, the Firebase messaging has been added successfully. Okay, so before we proceed, we are doing a small prevention. For this, we go to the Android folder, the app folder, and the build.gradle. And in the default configuration, we change the minimum SDK version to 19. This is super important in preventing our application from crashing in the future. Okay, so now we are going to create the API folder. For this, we go into our lib folder, we create a new folder, we call it API, and inside it we create the Firebase API file. Okay, so inside this file we are going to create a simple Dart class responsible for all of our notification logic. So first we create the Firebase API class, inside it we create a Firebase messaging instance, of course, we need to import the Firebase messaging package. Next, we create the init notification method and we mark it as asynchronous. Inside this method, we add this method for requesting permission from the user. On iOS, this will show a dialog. On Android, it will return a value indicating whether the app notification are enabled or disabled by the operating system. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get the Firebase cloud messaging token. This token is an identifier for our device and our application, and we will use it later on for sending the notification to this specific device. For now, we are going to print it to the console. However, in a real world application, you would probably want to save this token somewhere in your database alongside your user entity to use it later on. Okay, great so far. So now we are going to jump into the main.dart. 
Okay, so inside the main function we need to initialize Firebase by calling these two lines and then we need to call the notification class and method we have just created and of course we mark the function as asynchronous. Okay, so now I'm going to save this and we are going to run our project. I have my phone plugged into the computer. Okay, great. So as you can see, this is the FCM token printed to the console. So now our application is fully integrated with Firebase and we can proceed. Okay, so back to the Firebase API file. We are going to add some code which allows us to receive a notification in the background in the terminated case. So inside the init notification method, we add this line on background message or the background handler. We pass a function to it. Please note that this function cannot be an anonymous function. It must be a top level function meaning it's not a class method which requires initialization so I'm going to declare it here outside of the Firebase API class so we write the handle background message and we pass a remote message as a parameter to it so now I'm going to print the notification title body and the message data if exists okay great so I'm going to hot restart the application great so I'm going to copy the FCM registration token now we jump into our Firebase console so the engage tab, the cloud messaging tab, and we send our first message. The title can be push notifications and the notification body can be our awesome. And we click on this. We add the FCM registration token because we want to target this device. And now I'm going to move my application to the background and we send the notification. Great. As you can see, we have just received a notification with the parameters we entered here. Okay, so if we jump into our debug console, we can see the log that we expected. Title push notifications, body are awesome, and the empty payload. Okay, so if we click on this notification, we are redirected into our application. Great. So now I'm going to terminate my application because we want to test the terminated case. So as you can see, our app is terminated. Okay, so back to the Firebase console, we are going to send another message to the same FCM token. Great, as you can see, we received another notification with the parameters we wanted. So if we click on it, our application is open from the terminated state. Okay, next we are implementing the navigation to a particular screen or notification click. For this, we need to create some UI. For this, I'm creating another folder inside the lib folder, which is the page folder. Inside it, I'm creating two screens. First is the notification screen dart. And for the next screen, it is the home screen dart. Okay, so for the home screen, we create a very simple widget, just a scaffold with an app bar. For the notification screen, it's almost the same. We just add a named route to it. Okay, so if we jump to the main dot dart, we add navigator key for navigation purposes. We change the material app into our own. We import the missing files. And finally, we get rid of the existing widget. So if I save this and I perform a hot restart, this is our UI now. Okay, so if we go to the Firebase class, we are going to add some code here. So we create the handle message method. If the message is null, we exit this method. Else we navigate to the notification screen with the message as an argument. Next, we create this method for further organization of our code. So we add this line, which is very essential for the iOS foreground notification. This will become more essential in the future. We add this line, which is the get initial message. This is responsible for performing an action when the app is open from a terminated state via a notification. So we pass the handle message to it, meaning we want to execute the handle message method when the app is opened from a notification. Next, we add this line, the on message opened app, which is the same but for background case, meaning we want to execute the handle message method when the application is opened from the background state via a notification. Finally, we add the background handler, we move it here for better organization of our code. So inside the init notification method, we call the init push notification method here. Now we jump to the notification screen. Inside the build method, we add this line which is the argument we pass to this screen and we display everything 
from the argument here okay so if i hot restart my application so i'm moving my application to the background and i'm going to the firebase console cloud messaging tab as usual so i'm writing a title as background notification is here and i send a test message to this fcm so the notification is here i'm clicking on it as you can see we navigated not to the home screen but to the notification screen with the argument we passed so we have the title body and the empty payload so if i get rid of my application i change the title send the message the application is terminated as you can see we received a notification we click on it this can take a while because the application is launching and we are navigated to the notification screen with the arguments we wanted okay so far so great but what happens when our notification arrives and our application is in the foreground in this case firebase messaging is not enough we need another package which is the flutter local notification so we go to the pubspec.yaml inside the terminal we run this command flutterpub add flutter local notifications as you can see it has been added successfully next we go to the firebase api class so first we need to create an android channel which is a sort of notification category we pass some settings to it and we need to register it inside the android manifest file so we go to the android folder inside the android manifest file outside of the activity tag we add another tag we provide the channel id and the channel importance to it so now we register our channel and back to the firebase api class next we need to create a flutter local notification plugin instance and now we are going to take advantage of an fcm method which is the on message listener this listener triggers whenever a message arrives when our application is in the foreground so we just add it into our init push notification method we extract the notification object from the message object if it is now we exit our method else we show a local notification with the hash code title body of the notification we have just received and we provide the channel id name and description to it of course of the channel we have just created and we provide an icon to it as for the icon we need to go to the android folder app folder src main and res folder so i'm just going to copy this image from the mipmap folder and i'm pasting it inside the drawable version 21 folder and i'm pasting it inside the drawable folder of course you can provide whatever image you want but you just need to provide the correct path to it okay so inside the firebase api class as for the payload or the data we pass from the notification to the local notification it can only be a string not an object so we just need to transform it into a map and then we decode it as a json string in order to preserve our object okay great so far so now we are creating another method which is the init local notification method so first we initialize ios next we provide android initialization settings and we provide the drawable icon we have just added next we put together both of the android and ios settings initializations and we initialize the local notification with the settings we provided for the on select notification method this is the method that triggers when a user clicks on a local notification so we just need to decode the payload we encoded earlier and we create a remote message object from it which we need to pass to our handle message method in order to trigger navigating to the notification screen as we seen earlier now we need to resolve platform specific implementation for android for ios this of course would be different and finally we create the notification channel with the android channel we added earlier so now back to the init notification method we just add or call our init local notification method everything is good so far we just hot restart our application you may face some errors right now that is because we did a lot of work on the android folder you just need to reinstall your application if you face an error and don't forget to copy the fcm token because it changes on every installation okay so back to the firebase console i'm creating a notification with the title foreground notifications are awesome i'm sending a test message to this fcm as you can see we have just received a notification while our application is in the foreground and if we click on it we are redirected to the notification screen with the data we entered so everything works perfectly as you can see we managed to get notification whenever the application is in the foreground background or terminated this was super easy thanks to firebase i hope you find this video useful and i'll see you in the next one